Uh, I saw The Equalizer 3 this week, and uh, full disclosure, I have not seen The Equalizer 1 or 2. I know it's based on a TV show, and there is like a reboot of the TV show with Queen Latifah that I've seen like parts of episodes from because my mom watches it. But I went into this one really not knowing anything about it, which this film actually kind of works for because I get the feeling that this script was not written as a sequel to The Equalizer. I get the feeling that they took an existing script and decided to just rework it slightly to be an Equalizer sequel. Kind of like how uh, some of the later entries in the Die Hard films were completely unrelated things that they reworked to be Die Hard films. But in this film, it's like the vast majority of it doesn't even need to be a sequel at all. And it's only like at the end, they add a little bit of connective tissue for the people who have seen the other films to be like, oh yeah, see, see here's the connection. like. There's a new character that, that is introduced in this film that we find out at the end is related to characters from some of the previous films. But that's about it. That's like, th that's the connective tissue to be like, okay, it's an equalized film. And I actually think it harms the film in doing it because up until that point, everything is all like a very properly self-contained story that really, I think, stands better on its own than trying to be like, oh yeah, remember this is a sequel? Cause like, I, you know, as somebody who hasn't seen the others, I honestly, I think if you had changed the title of this and not said that it was a sequel, I wouldn't have known up until the end when they do that little bit. That wasn't even really necessary. There's also a subplot in the movie that I feel like was only tacked on to be like some kind of like propaganda. Like, you know how the Transformers movies are kind of like pro-US military films because the Pentagon is known for, you know, giving like access to military bases and, and military equipment for filming so long as the films portray them in a positive light. This movie kind of does that for the CIA. It's really weird. The CIA is in this movie, but like they're not even directly investigating the uh, stuff that um, the main character is is involved with. They're like kind of looking at some other thing like that the, the mafia in Sicily is doing. It's only like partially connected, but like the CIA are just unambiguously treated as the good guys while they're doing it. It's weird. It's it, like, especially for the CIA, I can like, if they had, you know, made it Interpol instead, like, okay, but like the CIA is like, especially notorious for like going to other countries and screwing them over. But here it's like, you know, the CIA shows up in Sicily and like everyone just seems to be like, oh yes, of course we'll work with the CIA. We're happy to have you here. And I'm just like, nobody's happy to have the CIA here. What are you talking about? Denzel Washington's character, he's taken in by a, um, uh, a Sicilian village and like it feels almost paternalistic in how simplistic and idyllic their village lifestyle is and how everyone immediately accepts him and takes him in as one of their own. And nothing in the film only on like justifies it other than he's staying with the village doctor that everyone likes. But like he doesn't show up saving the town and then they like him. He shows up and then they just like him and like people are are like giving him free stuff and giving him discounts at the store. And like, I was wondering early on, I'm like, are they like secretly afraid of him? Do they think he's like one of the mafia guys? And that's why they're giving him stuff to be like, hey, you know, be on our side. But like, no, it's just, oh, here is this simple village. Isn't life wonderful here with these simple people to, to make them seem more innocent to, you know, make the brutality of the mafia moving in and trying to take them over. Like it makes you hate the mafia more. But I, it's it's very it's it's very simplistic in that regard. And I, I don't know. Like I liked the villagers. I thought they were all very it's a nice, quaint little village, beautiful set design, you know, uh, Sicily beautiful island lots lots of great architecture and coastal shots and everything the mediterranean is a gorgeous part of the world and in terms of the action oh i really like the action in this movie but it might not be your cup of tea this is a very very brutal and bloody movie with more stabbings than i can count on my hands so it, it's a very visceral action and if that's a little bit too much for you you might want to give this one a pass but i enjoyed it and especially they definitely make you make the villains not at all sympathetic. So you don't feel bad at all when he is like improvising a stabbing tool to jam through one of their necks. You know, you're you're, you're, you're going to root for him the whole way that he does it. But I feel like as a sequel 
to something that I haven't seen. It didn't need to be a sequel at all. It should have just been its own standalone thing. But the way Hollywood works these days, you can't really sell things that aren't part of an established franchise. So maybe that's just the way things are going to go in the future. People write uh, original properties and the studio goes, oh, I like this script, but nobody's going to see it. Let's put a three at the end of it. Now people will go and see it. And maybe that's the situation here. Not my favorite way for uh, Hollywood to operate, but maybe it's just got what we got to deal with. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm trying to get my channel monetized, so your view means a lot. Don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell. I stream every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, so catch me live and join in on the convo. You can find all my socials in the description below. And thank you to all my patrons with a special shout out to Piftle Cakes and Ryan D. Your support means the world. Catch you next time.